In this video, we're going to learn how we can download data from inside Unity. This way, you can add some really cool stuff to your games, like, for example, a workshop showcase widget that grabs data from the Steam Workshop and displays it in your game. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so our goal here is to learn how to download data from the web while inside Unity. This can be used for a multitude of scenarios. You can build some really complex stuff in your web server and interact with it from Unity. In here, we're going to create a class that we can use to download data very easily. One of the possible things you can make is this. Over here, I have a nice widget that displays workshop items for my latest game, Battle Round Tycoon. The game itself includes this widget in the main menu, so players can see what cool VIPs are on the workshop. If you want to see it for yourself, you can pick up the game on Steam. The way the widget works is it grabs the HTML code from this page. I made this collection so I can easily add or remove items onto it. So the widget goes into this page, downloads the entire HTML code. Then in that HTML code, it locates the various thumbnails for all of the items. Then it downloads all of those items as textures and finally creates a nice UI element in order to display them. Doing it this way by contacting an external website means that after the game has been published, it will continue to show an updated list. If I want people playing the game right now to see different items on the list, all I need to do is just add or remove items into this collection, so I don't have to publish an updated build or anything like that. That's one of the benefits of using external data. Again, this is just one of the many potential use cases for downloading data from a website. You can use this for anything you think of that requires an external connection. Here we're going to create a class that we can use to download data very easily. Alright, so let's get to it. So let's start off by looking at how we can contact the web in Unity. So in here, let's start off with a simple testing script. Okay, now in here, the class that we can use in order to contact the web is the Unity Web Request, which is inside Unity Engine.networking. So this is the class that we can use. As you can see, there are various methods to contact a certain URL. So let's see how we can use this. Let's start off with the simplest method. So we do a basic GET request. So for that, we have a static function called GET, and in here we pass a URL. So let's define it. In here, just for testing, let's simply contact Google. So we do this and this. Now this, as you can see, returns a Unity Web Request object. And here, if we see the definition, we can see that it implements iDisposable. So this is an object that should be disposed. So the correct way to use it is in here inside a using statement. If you're not familiar with the using statement, all it does is make sure to call dispose when we exit the code block, so this way we never forget and end up with memory leaks. So now that we have this nice object, in here we can contact the server by calling send web request. And as you can see, this returns an async operation. So the correct way to implement this is inside a coroutine. So in here we should do yield return but we can only do a yield return inside a coroutine, so let's do that. Okay, so just like this, we are starting our coroutine correctly. Now down here, we're going to reach this code once the request has been successfully completed. So here the request either failed or succeeded. So let's do a test on the web request. If we have a network error, or we have a HTTP error. If we have any of those, let's do a debug log on our error. And if not, then everything succeeded. So here, let's do a debug log on what we received. Inside the web request, we have a download handler, and inside that, we can simply grab the text. All right, so this should be working. Let's test. And here we are, and yep, you can see the received, and in here we can see the HTML for google.com. All right, awesome. Now let's make a text field so we can easily see what we received. All 
Okay, so here I've created a simple text object. And then on the testing, I add the field for our object. So let's just drag the reference. So here in the script, as you can see, there's the text mesh field. And then here, when we get, we go into our text mesh in order to set the text. Okay, so let's see. And yep, here we have our download HTML code. Okay, great. So now here in the code, let's test for our errors. So here in order to force an error, let's simply try to contact Google on a weird port. So just like this, we should have an error. And if there it is, we have our nice error. Okay, so far so good. Now let's test for a 404. So in here, let's simply put a random page. And if there it is, we have a 404. Okay, great. So we are correctly identifying when our download has succeeded or when it failed and what type of failure it had. So just like that, over here, we have a simple code for contacting a web server. Now let's make this code easier to use. Let's put the coroutine inside a function. Okay, so here we have simplify to a simple function call. And now in here, let's also make some delegates so we can pass in actions that define the success and fail behavior. Okay, so here we have an action which again, an action is simply a delegate that returns void. And in this case, we have a string parameter and the same thing for on success. So this is how we're going to return our values from this function. So over here, instead of doing our log or setting the text, we simply call on error and we pass in our error and do the same thing on success. All right, so now we're working with these very nice delegates. And now we can go up here into our simple function. And here we pass in our delegates. And yep, just like that. So now we have this function that is extremely easy to use. We simply pass in our URL and then two delegates to handle either the error or success. And in here, we're doing the same as previously. We're doing a debug.log on the error. And again, this one is called from in here. Inside the coroutine, we have our on error delegate and we call it in here, pass in the error. On success, we pass in the text. So just like this, we should be able to see the exact same thing as previously, except right now we have a very simple function that we can use. Let's see. And yep, there's our error still working. And there's our successful download. So everything still works great, except now our code is much easier to use. Awesome. Now let's take this and apply the same thing for the get texture function. So here the get texture works pretty much the same way, except instead of a Unity web request, we have a Unity web request texture, and the function is called get texture. So here I've copied pretty much the same thing except our texture will return a texture 2D on success. Then here we have the same yield logic in order to send our web request. Then we check for an error. And if it is not an error, then we have succeeded. And in here, we can now cast this download handler into a download handler texture. And then we can now use this in order to access our return texture. All right, so just like that, we have our nice texture. So now for testing, let's go into the editor. And in here, let's make a simple sprite render. Okay, like that. Now let's go to the code and in here add a field for our sprite render. So here in the editor, let's drag our reference. So just like that, okay. And now in here, instead of downloading a simple web page, let's try downloading a texture instead, so a URL. So here's the URL for one of the thumbnails for my videos. And now in here, we're going to use the get texture function. So we pass in the URL, now an error, and our success delegate. So if we succeed, we print success, and then we go into the sprite render in order to set the sprite. So here, let's create a sprite. So we do sprite.create, then we pass in our texture 2D. All right, so just like this, we create a sprite. 
and now we can use this sprite on our sprite render. Okay, so let's see if our sprite is correctly downloaded and shown in our scene. And yep, there it is, the sprite was correctly downloaded from the web and shown in our sprite render. So again, this texture does not exist in the project files at all, it's being grabbed from an external website and shown inside our game. Right, awesome. So over here we have all our code working. We have a nice function to download the text from a simple URL, and then we have a function to get a texture. Now let's put all of this into a nice dedicated class so we can easily reuse it in multiple projects. So in here, let's make a new script. Let's call this our web requests. Now in here, let's make this a simple static class. So get rid of mono behavior, okay. Now let's copy our code from here. So copy both of these functions. Now here, since this is a static class, all of these methods need to be static. Okay, everything is static. Now you can already see an issue, which is in here a coroutine requires a mono behavior script to run, so we cannot use it directly in a simple static class. So to solve that, we can create an empty mono behavior class in here. So here it is, just a class that extends mono behavior and it's completely empty. Now we make a field for it. So now we can use this in order to start our coroutine. So just like that, now it works. However, obviously we need to initialize this object. So let's make a simple static init function. And in here we test if this already exists. And if this does not exist, then let's make a game object. So if it does not exist, then we create a game object and we attach our component onto it. So then in these functions, all we need to do is call init before we do our coroutine. And this way, this class is working correctly. Make these two public. All right, just like that, awesome. So now we have a nice static class that we can use from anywhere in our project. And we can easily copy this into multiple different projects. And here, all we need to care about is we can use these functions. So the get or the get texture and everything else is handled automatically. So now we can go back into the testing. And now in here, we simply go into our web request class and use this function. Okay, so let's see if everything still works. And yep, there it is, everything still works. We're still downloading a sprite from the web and printing our success. So now we have this nice class that we can use anywhere on any project. Awesome. And now finally, with all of this working, let's apply it to a real game so here in my project files, I have this workshop showcase script. This is the exact same script that is used in Battle Royale Tycoon. So let's see it in action. So here it is, the workshop showcase working. This is the exact same widget that is shown on the main menu in Battle Royale Tycoon. And what it's doing is it's grabbing all these images from a certain workshop collection. Here in the editor, you can see the very simple setup. Here I have the object, which contains a script. Then inside it, I have a container, which contains also a mask. Then inside the mask, we have the actual container that contains all of our thumbnails. And as you can see, they are all printed and then they all move to the left. So here they are, and as you can see, they move to the left. Once they reach the edge, they get teleported to the right and they keep going forever. All right, so let's see the code. So here is our script. On awake, we just grab our references. Then on start, we start downloading the workshop showcase. Here is where we are downloading. We have our URL that contains a link to our collection. So here you can see the collection. So this is the web page that we are contacting from inside our game. And in here you can see that it's a collection of a bunch of certain VIPs. So in here we are using the get function that we just implemented. We have our nice error in case something goes wrong. And then here we have our success. We grab the HTML code from that page. And then we simply do some string searching in order to locate our preview images. So once we locate the URL for each preview image, we do a get texture. We download that texture, we add it to the thumbnail list. This, as you can see, is just a list of texture 2D. Then we randomize our list and we print them. Here the randomize does exactly as intended, it just randomizes our thumbnails. And then here on our print thumbnails, first we destroy the previous ones, then we create all of them. We go through the entire workshop thumbnail list, we instantiate our template, we locate it correctly, and then we simply have a nice script constantly moving it to the left and then teleporting it to the right. The images are shown using a raw image on the UI, which this receives a texture 2D. So we don't even need to convert it into a sprite. Again, here is the final result. 
And again, none of these images actually exist in our project files. They are all being grabbed from an external web server. I have used this system on several games, so here is the workshop showcase for Ninja Tycoon, and in here the workshop showcase for Hyper Knights Battles. So as you can see, I built this widget just once and used it on multiple games. Doing it this way by contacting an external website means that after the game has been published, it will continue to show an update on the list. So in this case, if I want the people playing the game right now to see a different list, all I need to do is add or remove items from this collection. I don't have to publish an updated build or anything. That's one of the great benefits of using external data. So here we have the final effect, and here we have our very useful web requests class that we can use in any project. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.